a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Venom, Marvel Comics character. Venom is a fictional character appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics, commonly in association with Spider-Man. The character is a sentient alien symbiote with an amorphous, liquid-like form, who requires a host, usually human, to bond with for its survival. After bonding with a human host, the symbiote bestows its enhanced powers upon the host. When the Venom symbiote bonds with a human, that new dual life form usually refers to itself as Venom. The symbiote was originally introduced as a living alien costume in The Amazing Spider-Man 52, with a full first appearance as Venom in The Amazing Spider-Man 00. The Venom symbiote's first known host was Spider-Man, who eventually separated himself from the creature in The Amazing Spider-Man 58. When he discovered its true nefarious nature, the symbiote went on to merge with other hosts, most notably Eddie Brock, its second and most infamous host, with whom it first became Venom and one of Spider-Man's archenemies. Comics journalist and historian Mike Conroy writes of the character, what started out as a replacement costume for Spider-Man turned into one of the Marvel Web Slinger's greatest nightmares. Venom was ranked as the 22nd greatest comic book villain of all time in IGN's list of the top 100 comic villains. IGN also ranked Matt Gargan's incarnation of Venom as 7 in their list of the top 50 Avengers. While the Flash Thompson incarnation was ranked as 7, the character was listed as 3 on Empire's 50 Greatest Comic Book Characters. Conception and Creation The original idea of a new costume for Spider-Man that would later become the character Venom was conceived by a Marvel Comics reader from Norwich, Illinois named Randy Shuler. In 1982, Jim Shooter, Marvel's editor-in-chief at the time, sent Shuler a letter acknowledging Marvel's interest in the idea which they ended up purchasing from him for $220. Shooter came up with the idea of switching Spider-Man to a black and white costume, possibly influenced by the intended costume design for the new Spider-Woman, with artist Mike Zeck designing the black and white costume. Writer-slash-artist John Byrne states on his website that the idea for a costume made of self-healing biological material was one he originated when he was the artist on Iron Fist to explain how that character's costume was constantly being torn and then apparently repaired by the next issue, explaining that he ended up not using the idea on that title. But that Roger Stern later asked him if he could use the idea for Spider-Man's alien costume. Stern in turn plotted the issue in which the costume first appeared, but then left the title. It was writer Tom DeFalco and artist Ron Friends who established that the costume was a sentient alien being that was vulnerable to high sonic energy during their run on The Amazing Spider-Man that preceded Michellini's. The symbiote was first introduced as Spider-Man's new black costume in The Amazing Spider-Man 52 as part of a story called Homecoming. The story takes place after Spider-Man's return from the events of the miniseries Secret Wars, where he first obtains the black costume. The full first appearance of Venom is in The Amazing Spider-Man 00. After the symbiote bonds with Eddie Brock, Spider-Man The story of how Spider-Man gets his new black costume is recounted in Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars in which writer Jim Shooter and artist Mike Zeck depicted the heroes and villains of the Marvel Universe transported to another planet called Battleworld by a being called the Beyonder. After Spider-Man's costume is ruined from battles with the villains, he is directed by Thor and the Hulk to a room at the hero's base where they inform him a machine can read his thoughts and instantly fabricate any type of clothing, choosing a machine he believes to be the correct one. Spider-Man causes a black sphere to appear before him, which spreads over his body, dissolving the tattered old costume and covering his body to form a new black and white costume. To Spider-Man's surprise, the costume can mimic street clothes and provides a seemingly inexhaustible and stronger supply of webbing. During their run on The Amazing Spider-Man, writer Tom DeFalco 
and artist Ron Friends established that the costume was a sentient alien symbiote that was vulnerable to both fire and high sonic energy. It was in that storyline that the costume would envelop Peter Parker while he slept and go out at night to fight crime, leaving Parker inexplicably exhausted in the morning. Parker had the costume examined by Reed Richards, who discovered that it was alive. And when Parker realized it was trying to permanently bond to Parker's body, he rejected it, and it was subsequently contained by the Fantastic Four. The symbiote escaped and bonded again to Parker, who used sound waves from a cathedral's church bell to repel it. But the symbiote had grown an emotional attachment to Peter so he willingly left Peter's unconscious body and moved him to safety before disappearing. Eddie Brock David Michelini would later write the backstory of Eddie Brock as the alien's new host that would become the villain Venom, using the events of Peter David's 1985, Sunita. Storyline in the spectacular Spider-Man as a basis for Brock's origin. Venom's existence was first indicated in Web of Spider-Man 8. When he shoved Peter Parker in front of a subway train without Parker's spider sense warning him, though only Brock's hand was seen on panel. The next indication of Venom's existence was in Web of Spider-Man 4. When Parker climbed out of a high-story window to change into Spider-Man, but found a black arm coming through the window and grabbing him, again without being warned by his spider sense. Venom made his cameo appearance on the last page of The Amazing Spider-Man 99, when he terrorized Parker's wife, Mary Jane Watson, and made his full appearance in The Amazing Spider-Man 00. Spider-Man would confront him in the following issue, when Brock reveals that he was a Daily Globe reporter who worked on the Sinita case, and that his career was ruined when it was discovered that the man Brock announced as the Sinita was a compulsive confessor forced to eke out a living writing lurid stories for venomous tabloids. Brock blamed Spider-Man for his predicament. He took up bodybuilding to reduce stress. It failed to do so, and Brock sank into a suicidal depression, seeking solace at the church where Spider-Man repelled the symbiote. The symbiote, sensing Brock's hatred for Spider-Man, bonded with the disgraced reporter. Brock took on the name Venom in reference to the sensationalistic material he was forced to traffic in following his fall from grace. Over the years, as the symbiote gained more intelligence and moved to additional human hosts, the name began to apply to the symbiote as well as its hosts. As Venom, Brock fights Spider-Man many times. Winning on several occasions, Venom repeatedly tries to kill Peter Parker slash Spider-Man, both when the latter was in and out of costume. Thus Parker is forced to abandon his, black costume, which the symbiote had been mimicking, after Venom confronts Parker's wife Mary Jane. Venom escapes from the supervillain prison, the vault, to torment Spider-Man and his family. The symbiote is finally rendered comatose after being subdued by Stick's plague virus, and Eddie Brock is subsequently placed in Rikers Island prison. When the symbiote recovers and returns to free Brock, it leaves a spawn to bond with Brock's psychotic serial killer cellmate Cletus Cassidy, who becomes Carnage. Meanwhile, Venom and Spider-Man fight on a deserted island, and Spider-Man strands Venom there after faking his own death. Soon after, however, Spider-Man brings Venom back to New York City in order to stop Carnage's killing spree. After being incarcerated once again, Venom is used to create five new symbiotes, which are all paired with human hosts, as well as helping Eddie Brock to seek continued revenge against Spider-Man. The symbiote also aids Brock in a sporadic career as a vigilante. He and the symbiote occasionally share a desire to protect innocent people from harm, even if it means working side by side with the hated Spider-Man. This is especially true when Venom combats the entity he believes to be his spawn, Carnage. When Spider-Man helps Venom save Brock's ex-wife Anne Weying, the two form a temporary truce. Though this falls apart after Weying's suicide, the symbiote is temporarily stolen by U.S. Senator Stuart Ward, who hopes to better understand his own alien infection by researching the symbiote before it returns to Brock. Now, however, it dominates its host, Brock, rather than vice versa. 
Eventually, Eddie Brock and the symbiote go their separate ways as the symbiote grows tired of having a diseased host, and Eddie rejects its growing bloodlust, leading him to sell the symbiote at a supervillain auction. The creature that would become Venom was born to a race of extraterrestrial symbiotes, which lived by possessing the bodies of other life forms. The parasites would endow their victims with enhanced physical abilities, at the cost of fatally draining them of adrenaline. According to the 1995 Planet of the Symbiotes storyline, the Venom symbiote was deemed insane by its own race after it was discovered that it desired to commit to its host rather than use it up. The symbiote was then imprisoned on Battleworld to ensure it did not pollute the species' gene pool. The symbiote bonds with its new host, Lee Price, launching Volume 3 of the Venom comic book series. The series ran for six issues total. Eddie Brock is able to regain the Venom symbiote at the conclusion of the series, returning the Venom comic book title to Volume 1 with issue 50. Mac Gargan the Venom symbiote approaches Mac Gargan, the villain formerly known as Scorpion, and offered him new abilities as the second Venom. Gargan bonded with the creature, which would later give him an extra edge as part of Norman Osborn's Sinister Twelve. As the Avengers dealt with the rest of the Twelve, Spider-Man swiftly defeated Gargan, even with these additional powers, which Spider-Man suggests is attributed to the fact that Mac Gargan does not hate Spider-Man as much as Eddie Brock did. Gargan later became a member of a subgroup of the Thunderbolts, which was drafted by the Avengers to hunt down the members of the fugitive New Avengers. It was then revealed that he had been outfitted with electrical implants by the government to keep the symbiote in check. When in the Venom persona, Gargan retained very little of his original personality and was controlled almost completely by the symbiote, which drove him to cannibalism. When the symbiote was dormant in his body, he expressed nausea and fear of the organism. During a fight with Anti-Venom, he and his symbiote were separated, and the Venom symbiote was nearly destroyed. Blobs of it still existed in his bloodstream, however. So Osborne injected Gargan with a vaccine for Anti-Venom's healing powers, which restored the symbiote by causing the remaining pieces of it to expand rapidly. Gargan dons a scorpion battle armor over the symbiote while it heals, causing him to become what Spider-Man calls, Venorpion, although when the symbiote is fully restored it shatters the armor. After ingesting a chemical given to him by Norman Osborne, Venom transforms into a more human appearance similar to the black-suited Spider-Man. Osborne introduces him as the Amazing Spider-Man, a member of the Dark Avengers, while unveiling the team. After the Siege of Asgard, Gargan and most of the Dark Avengers were taken into custody, while being held on the raft. The Venom symbiote was forcefully removed from him, ending his run as Venom. Flash Thompson on December 9, 2010, Marvel Comics announced a new, Black Ops, Venom owned by the government. This new Venom was featured in a new series called Venom in March 2011. The birth of the new Venom can be seen in The Amazing Spider-Man 54 in February 2011. On January 28, 2011, the identity of Black Ops, Venom was revealed to be Flash Thompson. Flash is hired by the government to be a special agent wearing the Venom symbiote. Flash is only allowed to wear the suit for up to 48 hours, or risk a permanent bonding with the symbiote, along with the alien. Flash is equipped with a multi-gun, designed to change into any type of gun Flash needs. The government is also equipped with a kill switch, designed to take Flash out if he loses control. Flash rejects the kill switch and later joins the secret Avengers, Thunderbolts, Guardians of the Galaxy, and even becomes appointed by the Clinter of Space Knight. Lee Price After being separated from Flash Thompson through unspecified means, the Venom symbiote happens upon a black market deal between Black Cat's gang and Tombstone's gang. He resorts to bonding with one of the men present. A discharged army ranger named Lee Price who was with Scorpion as part of Black Cat's gang. 
the weakened symbiote pleads with Price, attempting to convince him to become a hero like Thompson. Price ignores and overpowers it, intent on using it for personal gain as a new, wholly villainous venom. Lee Price makes his way to Black Cat's hideout where Scorpion accuses him of botching the black market sale by causing the shootout. After having to keep the Venom symbiote from attacking Black Cat, Lee Price takes his leave from Black Cat's lair as Scorpion gets suspicious towards Lee. His departure is seen by some FBI agents. Lee Price later gets attacked by Tombstone's minion Firebug. Upon defeating Firebug, an FBI agent with a bazooka appears telling Lee Price that he is under arrest. Lee Price eventually loses the symbiote when Eddie Brock and Spider-Man take him down and he is arrested by the NYPD. While incarcerated at the New York Correction Supermax facility for superhuman incarceration, Lee Price is feared by most of the inmates and he even defeats three inmates in the prison's cafeteria when they try to kill him to boost their reputation. Lee swears to get out, reclaim the Venom symbiote, and plan revenge on those who have wronged him. Lee Price is later visited by his lawyer who tells him that two of the inmates he defeated had died in the infirmary and that Venom has resurfaced upon it being revealed in the news. At the courthouse, Lee Price's lawyer stated that Lee's actions as Venom were caused by the Venom symbiote while the opposing lawyer mentions about Venom still being at large. The judge then asked for some evidence to help with the trial. After the trial, Lee Price is released from prison and begins his plans to reclaim the Venom symbiote and take revenge on those who have wronged him. In Venom Incorporated, Lee Price steals the Mania symbiote from Andy and becomes Maniac. He uses the symbiote to infect the crime bosses and become a criminal kingpin, but he is defeated by Spider-Man, Venom, Black Cat, and Agent Anti-Venom. Tell Carr It is revealed in Venom, first host that Peter Parker is not Venom's first host. Venom's first host is actually a Kree soldier named Tell Carr. The Kree, desiring to replicate Skrull shape-shifting abilities, obtain the newborn Venom, which had been outcast from the other symbiotes. Telkar is recruited to be bonded to the newborn symbiote so that he can infiltrate the Skrull army. Telkar's body is biologically altered so he can have full control over the symbiote's mind to the point of erasing its memories. Separated from Telkar after his capture by the Skrulls, the symbiote goes on to be bonded to Spider-Man. Telkar escapes the Skrulls and wanders through the galaxy until he hears of an agent from Earth called Flash Thompson with a black symbiote suit. Recognizing it as his symbiote, he goes to Earth to find it. Eddie Brock arrives with a symbiote and saves Telkar from the war bride Skrullmlands, who had followed him. Angered by Venom's refusal to return to him, Telkar threatens to kill Venom's latest offspring. Exceeding to tell Carr, Venom reunites with him and they go to a Skrull research base to get a Skrull bioweapon. Simultaneously, Eddie is bonded to the offspring calling itself Sleeper and allies with Mlans to stop Telkar. During the ensuing battle, Telkar concludes that he doesn't need Venom anymore and uses an electrified spear to detach himself from it. Later he is betrayed by the Kree Empire while Eddie escapes with Venom and Mlans with Sleeper. Telkar, now furious, attempts to release the bioweapon on Earth. Sleeper bonds to Telkar and lobotomizes him. Sleeper, now with Telkar's body, wishes Eddie farewell and goes to explore the universe. Anne Weying Anne Weying first appears in The Amazing Spider-Man 75. She is Eddie Brock's ex-wife and a successful lawyer. Weying assists Spider-Man by sharing some of Brock's history. Later, she follows Spider-Man to the amusement park where Venom had Peter's parents. She confronts Brock and manages to convince him to end his feud. After Sinita shoots Anne as part of a crusade against social injustice, Anne becomes She-Venom when the Venom symbiote temporarily bonds with her to save her life. She-Venom lashes out against the men who had hurt her and Brock becomes afraid for her and compels the symbiote to return to him. 
Anne is left distraught at her actions while bonded. Later Anne is arrested on a false charge as part of a trap for Venom. She manages to warn Brock who sends the symbiote to her, allowing her to become She-Venom and escape custody. Some time later, Anne, traumatized by her experiences with Venom and the symbiote, commits suicide after seeing Spider-Man pass by her window in a black costume, believing it is Brock returning for her. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries Would you like to know more?